Well, the Dead by Daylight livestream has actually finished now, and we now have what the loadout for the powers and also the perks are going to be for the three new characters. So what we're going to want to start off with the monster, you know, aka Demi, you know. So what we have here, we actually have his three perks. We're going to start off with these first. So Surge is level 30. Cruel Confinement is level 35, and Mindbreaker is level 40. Obviously, these will uh, only start on appearing in the Demigorgon's Bloodweb first, but after achieving level 30, these versions will be able to be found on other killers. So, we're going to start with Surge. Putting a survivor into the dying state with a basic attack causes all generators within a 32 meter radius to instantly explode and regress. I actually sound really kind of cool, that does to me. I think it'd be, you know, pretty nifty as well. Because obviously if you're, uh, say, you know, normally you can be on a Jenny behind them and all this. And then all of a sudden, boom. You know, in the dying state, all Jennies blow and you're like, oh my god, come on. You know, but this applies an additional regression of 12%. Surge can be triggered once to every 60, 50, 40 seconds, depending on the levels. Unique to the day, uh, Demi until level 30, at which point its teachable version can then be le learned, sorry, not leaned, and taught to the other killers. Going on to the next one, we have Cruel Confinement. Every time a generator is completed, all windows and vault locations within the 32 meter radius from the completed generator, they are blocked for all survivors for the next 20, 25, 30 seconds, depending on what level you have that as. To me, that is going to be amazing, and it's also going to cause a bit of some scary moments in my eyes, because you're going to be there, you're going to do it, do a Jenny, all of a sudden, you try vaulting because he's on you, and you're going to go, oh, crap. You know, that's going to be great. You can see the aura of the vault locations as well, which have all been blocked by cruel confinement for the duration of the time. So that'll be good as well. Unique to the uh, Demi until level 35, which we're saying at which point is teachable then to all the other killers. Then we're going to look at Mind Breaker. While repairing generators with less than 50% repair progression, survivors are afflicted by the exhausted status effect. Any existing exhaustion status effect timers are paused while the survivor is repairing a generator, and this effect persists for 1, 2, 3 seconds, again depending on the skill level, what you have it, after they have ended and the repair action. Unique to the Demigorgon until level 40, then teachable to all killers. Right, with that, I can't actually wait for this, and it's going to be so good to play as the uh, Demi. Most because he just looks so cool in the uh, in the TV series. You know, I love Stranger Things, big Stranger Things fan. And the power for the Demi as well is really kind of cool. So what you obviously, it can set portals on the ground. You know, it, you know, once it has at least two portals, you can teleport from one part to another of the map. Going through the upside down and you lose visibility for only a couple of seconds until you reach the hole. But when you're underground, it does look like the upside down. So it's all red and grey and all this kind of stuff, which looks so cool. But the good thing about that as well, though, survivors can close the portals. Basically sabotaging them, you know, that's what they're doing. You know, you can you Demi Gorgon has got a charge attack, which you will slow it down for a couple of seconds. But once it's fully charged and release the power button, you will dash forward, attacking any survivors in the range of the attack. But you cannot maneuver while in this dash, and the dash actually looks like you know that it is like a jump, so that's kind of cool. But if you hold your power button as well, when the uh, Demi Gorgon connects to the upside down, it can send survivors within the radius of the portals. So that's going to be pretty fucking cool in my eyes. Cannot wait for that. That is going to be so, so good. So we're going to look at Nancy now. So Nancy's perks. You have better together, fixated, and inner strength. Again, these are only uh, appearing in Nancy's blood web until level 30, 35, 40, until they can be teached to everyone else. So, Nancy starts off with better together. The aura of the generator you are currently repairing is revealed to all other survivors located within 32 meters. If the killer downs a survivor while you're repairing a generator, you see the auras of all other survivors for 8, 9, 10 seconds. 
then we have fixated. This is the one I like as well, which you can see your own scratch marks at all times. That is pretty fucking cool in my eyes, right by there, now that is. Again, so like, if you want to do a trick, like say you're running from a killer, you're here and he's can't really see where you're going, like in Gideon's meat packing plant, I normally, in the, you know, like Amanda's area, with the mannequins and all that, I know, and the hole in the floor which goes into the bathroom, I normally run to the hole, then I walk backwards and go in one of the lockers. Killer always falls for it. So that's why I like doing and seeing your scratch marks now. That's going to be great. You'll be able to actually make those little diversions and tricks work even better. You have inner strength. Each time you clean the totem, inner strength activates. While inner strength is active, hiding in the locker for 10, 9 or 8 seconds, depending on the actual skill level, while you're injured, you full heal, which is great. But again, inner strength deactivates as soon as it has successfully triggered. But for me, I absolutely love those, I got it. And again, obviously now, we come on to Steve Harrington. Again, season one, he was a bit of a prick. But season two, everyone loved him. And to be honest with you, I liked him as well. And he was great, you know. That's what, you know, he's like, you know, he's become so close to Dustin as well. They are so good together. They are literally like a new duo. So, Steve's perks are babysitter, camaraderie and second wind babysitter level 30 level 35 for camaraderie and second wind is level 40 so babysitter when you unhook a survivor the unhooked survivor leaves no scratch marks and no blood trail for again four six eight seconds depending on the skill level again and you also see the killer's aura and the killer sees you for four seconds so it's kind of like oh shit you know we, you're looking at each other and that's going to be it like you know Camaraderie, while on the hook and reaching the struggle phase, the perk activates. While the perk is activated, if any time during the struggle phase another survivor comes in 16 minutes, 16 meters, not minutes, sorry, from your hook, the struggle phase timer is paused for 10, 12 or 14 seconds. That is going to help so much. You will probably see a lot of people using that and the scratch marks ones and a lot of other things together. For um, the Demi... I can probably see the Demi now. I'd probably, you know, I'd use barbecue and chili and I'd probably use the one on there where all the windows get locked, you know. So it's it's going to be really good being able to mix and match all of these. And for Steve's final perk, second win. Duh. <laughs> second wind. When you complete one health state of healing on other survivors, the perk activates. While activated, the next time you get unhooked or unhook yourself, you are affected by the broken status effect. While outside of the killer's terror radius, the perk passively heals you up to 100% over the duration of 24, 22 or 20 seconds, depending on skill level. The perk then deactivates once you are fully healed or if you get downed before the healing is completed. You will lose the broken status effect once the perk deactivates. You know... I cannot wait for this uh, DLC, and it's most likely going to appear on the 10th of September. If not the 10th, it'll be the 17th, mostly because all the past killers and everything else that we've had, the new chapters, you know, it was June the 18th, you know, it was March 17th, December the 11th. You know, that's the way it kind of works out, and the way it would work out for this one would be September 10th or September 17th, if I'm going to give an extra week just to go through things. I'm not too sure when the PTB version comes out for PCs. Wouldn't surprise me. It probably will be like next week or something. Because we're around there. But until then, we're going to have so much info going through for this. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell for all future DVD updates. And I'll see you lovely guys soon.